Coming up on an all new list. More pet owners are wanting to bring their pets along on their vacations. Tips to travel with your pets. What should I plan on doing along the way to make the trip comfortable? Plus, maybe I should bring a six pack into the kitchen too. Beer, it's what's for dinner. Oh. MG. But first, I'm Clea and I'm Joanna. We are professional organizers. Get organized with help from the Home Edit. It's your life, it's your list, and it starts right now. Hey friends, I'm Christina Guerrero. And I'm Jimmy Rhodes. And if you've ever seen the Home Edit on Netflix, you know it goes well beyond simply getting rid of stuff. Yeah, in fact, it features expert home organizers who help both celebs and regular folks declutter and then use the space to create life-changing new living areas. That sounds fantastic. Teresa Strasser is talking to one of the stars to see how the home edit techniques can work for you. And that's our featured story at the top of the list. Clean up, everybody, everybody clean everywhere. up. No, you missed that line. No, that, I don't no, know. No, no, you don't know. By now, you're probably familiar with the ladies of the Home Edit. Whether you've seen their product line in the Container Store or Walmart, or maybe you've watched one of the seasons of their show on Netflix, Get Organized with the Home Edit. I'm Clea. And I'm Joanna. We are professional organizers. Post Get Organized on Netflix. Everything changed overnight. We have clients all over the country, including some celebrities. Hi. How do you do it? Oh. They are pros at transforming chaos into clean, no matter what kind of space they're faced with. The systems are all the same. The systems that we have in place are so simple. So we sat down with one half of the duo, Joanna Teplin, to learn how we can de-stress our lives by decluttering just like they do at the Home Edit. It really does bring down your stress levels when you're feeling organized. Having a grasp about you know what you have, where you have it, just takes out so much of that unnecessary stress that you can actually avoid throughout your day. The first step is to start small. It seems like such an overwhelming project, so one thing we always like to say is start so small. Just bite-sized pieces that are so, you know, manageable to tackle. Do not take on a whole room at once. Break that down into a section of the room, then break that down even further. So start with a drawer. It's something that you can see from beginning to end and kind of get your feet wet and get yourself comfortable with it versus starting with like a huge closet or a pantry, which can be so overwhelming and then you want to just give up. Once you've picked your focus, it's time for the next step. What we like to do for organizing systems is to edit out your items. And that means getting rid of stuff you don't want. This is a crucial step because you don't want to try and organize while simultaneously decluttering or you'll end up giving up before you've even really begun. It's a mess, but that is our specialty. That means getting rid of those puzzles that are missing a piece and those cords that don't really go to anything you own. Next, you can categorize by separating everything into specific groups. And then you maintain them with using labels or any sort of labeling system. Even the rainbow can act as a label. You can use the rainbow method for pretty much everything from clothes to kids toys. And if that doesn't work for you, then write out labels as you go. And you'll do this for each spot you're trying to declutter. Which brings us to the final step, containing everything. So using baskets and bins, whether it's a huge closet, helps you feel organized and has, has a system in place. You can go even further by creating what Joanna calls zones. Having a designated space and a zone for things allows you to focus really intently on what task is at hand without getting so distracted. So in an office, for example, we love to have a cart. It allows you to see all your supplies. You can roll it to you, you can roll it away when you're done. It's just all there. Getting organized with the Home Edit is on the top of the list. A lot of summer vacation plans include bringing along the pets, but that takes a lot more than just a crate and some kibble. Whether you're hitting the road or flying, we have travel tips for your pups. For lots of folks, summer means family vacations, and that can include the furry members of the family. There's definitely been an increase of pet-friendly housing from hotels to vacation rentals, so more pet owners are wanting to bring their pets along on their vacations. Kimberly Vermillion, Director of Communications for the Arizona Animal Welfare League, has some ways to prep your pup for a trip. 
Let's start with health and safety. When you're traveling with a pet, is it a good idea to get a wellness check before you go? One thing you really want to be mindful of before you travel with your pet is that they're fully vaccinated because they need to be protected from all potential illnesses that could be out there. Take them for a checkup and get copies of their vaccinations to bring along. If you're traveling in the car or on the plane and your dog can get a little nauseous or anxious, that your vet can provide some medication to help along with that as well. Is it a good idea to map out your trip and know if you need to make a stop where you can go? Make sure that you're doing your research and making sure that you know that there is an emergency vet just in case. It's also a good idea to pack a pet first aid kit. So if you're going on the road or if you're flying, you want to make sure that you have those essentials for your pup. Next, road trip musts. While I'm driving, if it's a long road trip, what should I plan on doing along the way to make the trip comfortable? You want to make sure that you're providing those stops along the way and make sure that they can you know, stretch their legs and take a potty break. Is it a good idea to feed a dog while you're driving? We suggest feeding them a few hours before you leave on your road trip to let them settle that in their stomach before, just so they don't get an upset stomach on the ride. The same goes with water. Limit it to your pit stops along the road. What's the safest way to drive? The safest way is in a secure crate and okay. have that secure so it's not moving around. If you can't take them in a crate, use a leash and secure it to the seat belt. Make sure that, you know, if anything were to happen, that she's secure in there and safe. Finally, air travel essentials. All airlines have different restrictions, so you, whatever airline you're looking to fly, make sure you check those restrictions, those guidelines before you book the flight. There could be different fees and a limit on how many dogs you can bring. Your dog may also need a health certificate. And there are a few things you want to be mindful of, that they will have to go through TSA with you, and they'll have to get out of their kennel. So you want to make sure that they're comfortable getting in and out. Getting Rover ready for the vacation of a lifetime. Well, speaking of vacations, how about an adventure that'll make you feel like royalty? Teresa Strasser is hitting the road and visiting some of the most beautiful castles across America. No need to travel to a land far, far away to witness the majestic beauty of a castle. We have some right here in America. They range from the exquisite to the ancient to the unique. Freelance travel journalist Jennifer Broom highlights three of the best ones to add to your travel plans, starting with Hearst Castle in San Simeon, California. The Hearst Castle in California, in a word, is spectacular. It's one of California's most well-known tourist attractions, a large estate once owned by the late media mogul William Randolph Hearst. The beautiful grounds, it's the tapestries inside. Tours of the premises give you a close look at the extravagant architecture the rare and ancient works of art, even their one-of-a-kind pools. As you go on the tour, I promise you, you're going to be looking around and just going, wow, that's incredible. Our next stop takes us to Montezuma Castle in Camp Verde, Arizona. There it is. This castle is about a 30-minute drive from Sedona and is part of the Montezuma Castle National Monument. It is amazing. It is several stories and it's also got 20 plus rooms in it. It was first constructed by the Sanagua Indians during the 1100s and is now one of the best preserved prehistoric structures in North America. So it's something where you get a chance to get some ancient history and enjoy the beauty of Arizona and the Verde Valley. Our journey wraps up at Bishop Castle in Rye, Colorado. Let's see where these stairs lead. This castle is about an hour and a half from Colorado Springs, and it's been the work and vision of Jim Bishop for more than five decades. It's made of stone, iron, and steel. It has towers, domes. It's got a ballroom. It even has a fire-breathing dragon on it. It's his imagination run wild. Entrance to the castle is free and open to the public all year long. The view from up here? is fantastic. And that's your peek into some of the most beautiful castles across America. Here's what's next on the list. This planet has over 400 different species of shark on it. Five things you didn't know about sharks. They can grow up to over 40 feet long. And Spider-Man, Spider-Man. The big and little superheroes turning 60 this year. Ant-Man had a huge run in the early 60s and 70s. Plus, you won't believe the secret ingredient in these recipes. Oh, that's our flavor. Yeah, that's I can flavor. smell that. Yeah. All that and more next.
Hey YouTube, all right, I know that you're right in the middle of watching. This is such a good episode, right? But I wanted to remind you to hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss one minute of the list. Okay, now back to the show. We're back and guys, surf's up. Well, maybe not so fast considering it's National Shark Awareness Day and Shark Week starts later this month. Hattie DiJamal is sinking her teeth into the topic with five things you didn't know about sharks. Sharks play a vital role in ocean ecosystems. This planet has over 400 different species of shark on it. From open oceans to the shoreline to the Arctic frigid waters, sharks are found everywhere across the world. We spoke with animal care specialist Kyle Snell at the Odyssey Aquarium in Phoenix, Arizona to learn cool facts about sharks. First, the whale shark is the largest in the world. They can grow up to over 40 feet long. But despite that size, they eat some of the world's smallest organisms, krill. In fact, their esophagus can be the size of a quarter. Next, shark skin is rough. They have these tiny scales we call dermal denticles, which are actually shaped very similar to teeth. And these run along their body. If you were to touch a shark going from its tail to its head, it might even actually cut you. Shark scales help the shark maintain a more streamlined pattern as they move through the water and make them move just a little bit quicker with a little less effort. Our third factoid, they have large livers. It can make up to 25% of their body weight. Now shark livers are very helpful in that they produce this oil, often called squalene, which helps the shark float a little bit easier in the water so they don't have to spend quite as much energy to swim. We're swimming along to our next tidbit. Sharks have a sixth sense. They have gel-filled pores along their face that allow them to detect electrical reception in the water. So without being able to see anything at all, sharks can detect even the faintest heartbeats of animals around them. This is called the ampullae of Lorenzini. This special sixth sense and electroreception allows for sharks to be able to find prey that might be hiding in crevices or even buried under the sand. Finally, they reproduce in a variety of ways. Some sharks lay an egg, like a bird or a reptile. Some sharks have live birth, very similar to human beings. Other sharks will carry an egg inside its womb. It'll hatch inside the mother, and then they give live birth after that. And sharks are capable of something called parthenogenesis. They're actually capable of reproducing without a mate. There have been several species that have been found where they've had babies and the baby has had no paternal DNA. And those are five things you didn't know about sharks. Sure, it's Throwback Thursday, but did you know it's also Thoughtfulness Thursday? Yeah, we're making that a thing. A day for celebrating folks doing good deeds to help those in need. Here are three recent stories of people proving kindness wins. Coming in at number one, the Kindness Empire is a national organization that pairs elementary school children with elders living in residential homes to create intergenerational connections and learning through art. Offering programs that connect people from very different communities. Portrait Pals is one of their activities that has children and seniors painting portraits of each other. Sage was her name and she just looked very outgoing. She looks like she could do anything in the world. And the program allows seniors and kids to share their time, talent, and appreciation for one another. It's the younger generation that keeps me alive and that keeps me active. You can support their cause at thekindnessempire.com. At number two, a West Point, Utah military family was recently touched by the kindness of a father and son who walked by their home and stopped to pick up their fallen American flag. They didn't just pick it up, they folded it and hand delivered it to us. After Jason and Amy Martinez saw the incident unfold on their security camera, they tracked down the kind strangers on social media. It turns out it was the town's mayor, Brian Vincent, and his son Jackson. The flag still represents all of us as a country. This is our unifying symbol. It's really special that we were able to do it for that family, especially because of who served in their family. Just awesome that we live in the community that respects the symbolism. Well, that's kindness worth saluting. And third on our kindness wins list is another story out of Utah, where a Lakeview Hospital healthcare worker created an entire Lego hospital to inspire her colleagues. So the name of the hospital is St. Marcy's. 
and I named it after my favorite surgeon, Marcy Bowers. She's my personal surgeon, love to death. She's an amazing human being. Frontline worker by day, Lego engineer by night, Lexi custom built her hospital with tons of little intricate features to show coworkers her big time appreciation for them. I just wanted to express love for everybody. See, Legos are for love, except when you step on them barefoot. And those were three recent stories of people proving kindness truly wins. Lots more to come on the list. Stay with us. We're going back to school. All right. With tips to help you save on supplies. Expect to save anywhere from 50 to 90%. Delicious snacks. This is fun. Alternatives to college. We don't have a lot of craftsmen. And so much more. Back to school we go. We're back, and get this, Spider-Man, Hulk, Ant-Man, and more are hitting the big 6-0 this year. That's right, Addie D. Jamal looks at the Marvel superheroes who could join AARP, but show no sign of slowing down on the hot list. It seems like they just burst onto the scene with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but comic books and the characters within them are actually decades old stories. So why don't we go back and sort of revisit these characters and this momentous moment as they reach their twilight years in the superhero space. Celebrating the sexagenarian birthday of our never aging superheroes is editor at Rotten Tomatoes, Jacqueline Cauley. Starting off with Spider-Man. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. So our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man is reaching his 60s. Ah, this is so cool. <laughs> First appearing in the anthology comic book Amazing Fantasy number 15, he has since been featured in films, television shows, and video games. Spider-Man is an ever-enduring legacy to the idea that small people can achieve big things. With great power comes great responsibility. Spider-Man has been ranked as one of the most popular and iconic comic book characters of all time. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Up next, Hulk. And Hulk. <sighs> Smash. I think Hulk is a character that a lot of people resonate with for the idea that he's normal until you make him angry. I'm always angry. Influenced by Frankenstein and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Hulk made his debut in the comic book The Incredible Hulk number one in May 1962. The Hulk universe is expanding as Mark Ruffalo will also be a part of the new She-Hulk series starring Tatiana Mosley. Yes, yes, yes. And finally, Ant-Man. Ant-Man, I would say, is an interesting character that had a huge run in the early 60s and 70s. Ant-Man's first appearance was in the comic book Tales to Astonish, number 35. It was actually Paul Rudd's portrayal that we got to see in the very first Ant-Man that I think took Ant-Man to the new modern audiences. we sort of wrap up this idea of these Marvel stars aging, if they all age like Paul Rudd, the MCU has like so many chapters ahead of it. Like, let's just say it. How'd you do it, Scott? Do what? Superheroes refusing to age like normal humans on the hot list. We'll be right back. We're back. Sure, beer is the world's favorite adult beverage, but the popular thirst quencher has even more to offer. Jackie Denker shows us some dishes where beer can make good food great. It's time to get some food brewing, literally. Just like cooking with wine or any other spirit, it's always nice to actually impart some of the flavors. We brought the party to Petal House Brewery in Phoenix, Arizona, where culinary director Harmon Swartz showed me some bar fare where beer is the star. So it turns up our meals. That's absolutely right. While we're getting turned up. <laughs> First up, a British pub staple, beer battered fish. We're gonna create a little bit of the tempura batter. In a bowl, combine all purpose flour, cornstarch, and seasoning, which is made of onion powder, garlic powder, and salt. That's our flavor. Yeah, that's I can flavor. smell that. Yeah. In goes an egg, whisk, and slowly add in the hops. We used their beer blanche, which is a Belgian wheat. Beer is gonna activate a little Activate. Bit. Yes. And Dunk your fish. He uses cod, which absorbs the beer nicely. Then into an oiled pan or fryer until golden brown on both sides. And of course, pair with your favorite Belgian wheat beer. Mm. 
That is so good. Right? Move over, Gouda, because up next, we made beer cheese. So this is a great basic cheese. In a stock pot over medium heat, make a roux. Melt the butter down, add the flour in, and then mix it up really well. Then you add in your beer, water, heavy cream, and let that cook down. And so at home, can we use any beer? Absolutely. Reds are great, pale ales, pilsners. Once your roux is cooked down, use an immersion blender and blend away while you slowly add your cheese. He went with sharp cheddar and American white. And serve. To wash it down, a hazy IPA that will contrast nicely with the beer cheese. Oh, MG. Finally, beer brats. All you gotta do is pour the beer over your brats and let it sit overnight. We went with their Mexican Amber, which is a Vienna lager. And at home, he suggests we use... Anything that has a little bit more of a, a heavier body to it. More um, hops. Yep, yeah, hops. Yeah, stouts are great. Let them simmer in beer over medium heat until they get a bit of color. Throw them on the grill and enjoy on a charcuterie board or in a sandwich. Mmm. Right? Mmm. Here's to drinking our food as we learn to cook with beer. KG, I'll have the occasional beer with my food, but mm -hmm. it sounds like I ought to try it in my food. Yes, and beer battered fish, delish. You know, to save time in the kitchen, why not just feed the fish beer? <laughs> I mean, you're always thinking of new things, Jimmy. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you made it to the end of this episode of The List, so you've clearly discovered a key feature of YouTube. You get to watch stuff. And yeah, it streams right to you, wherever you are, for free. But wait, there's more. You can express yourself by liking this video and leaving us a comment. And I'm not done. The handy subscribe button will make sure you never miss the list. What a raft of features, huh? I won't even try to upsell you on the clear coat. But here's some other episodes you can test drive. Enjoy.